registration and enforcement. And so today we, we have an opportunity to interface with the, with the Venerable Authority of the Ministry. And I would like to ask that you post your question, post your questions on the chat group, but also at the end of the presentation, we shall have time where you can actually ask your question directly. And when you get that time, please keep your uh, questions uh, very specific on uh, uh, Mr. Isoke will be able to, uh, to gain to welcome all those who have joined us. Uh, as you say, welcome, and, I, and we are all looking forward to having a very, very knowledge-packed uh, uh, session uh, between now and 11 o'clock. And so now that we, we, are, we I think that I now want to use the opportunity to introduce and to welcome our speaker for the day, so we have Mr. David Musoke. Uh, he is a manager of tax literacy, tax information in Uganda Revenue Authority, working under the domestic taxes department of Uganda Revenue Authority. Mr. Musoke is personally known to me. He's a man of integrity. He's a very knowledgeable person and, uh, and, and uh, is here. He has uh, over 20 years experience in tax administration. He's worked with the institution for a long time and therefore understands, but he also has a, a heart. He's a listener. And so I think that, uh, David, at the end of your session, you will also post your number so that members can be able to have, uh, have a proper so that uh, if they need any clarification to the person, so it would be nice to uh, have a so if there's any difference in his view or And so David, you can help us to understand what you can, what exactly it means to demystify taxation, make it simpler. And for those who are not yet registered, just come and help. We'll share the screen. Or who are voiding, so it, it is mandatory. And so the sooner we get to understand what taxation is and what it means for our business, then we are able to begin to plan, to integrate it within our planning. And to say maybe in the next so many months, I should be able to start a process of registering and, and, and then eventually get uh, my business uh, being uh, aligned and, and, and doing things according to the laws of Uganda. And so, uh, David Risoke, I would like to invite you to take over the session. And you have, um, you have the next um, 45 minutes to, to, to one hour to present, and then we shall have questions and answers after you have presented. You're very welcome, uh, David Risoke. I hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosemary. I hope I am audible. Uh, can you hear me? We were losing you a bit. Oh, Hello. Yes, okay. Uh, excellent. Yes. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be a part of uh, Enterprise Uganda. And uh, I am happy to be here to demystify tax issues and taxation. It's not every day that the taxman is allowed to come into a business environment to come and uh, we have a chat. And so uh, I am excited to be here to talk to you about uh, uh, tax matters. We appreciate your visit here. You're visiting our CG. Uh, we need uh, these synergies. We need to collaborate. We need to teach our members. Uh, many of us just get an idea and want to make a million dollars today. And yet uh, there are few other things that, uh, that are supposed to fall into play and uh, we get into business a few days, months, years down the road, you find that uh, we have, uh, we're having challenges and then we start hating the taxman and yet uh, ideally, as I will share, uh, URA is, is, uh, is set up uh, under our laws to make sure that uh, it's administering certain laws and uh, it's, it's empowered to be able to, to come to the citizenry, to those who are engaging in different activities, use the law. We are not supposed to collect more. We are not supposed to collect less. We are supposed to collect what the law says. And uh, the law is not set by us. Uh, so uh, ideally, uh, you find at times we are having issues 
when um, we're thinking that uh, people are stepping beyond their boundaries, but we're happy to be here. And uh, just like Rosemary said, uh, even after here, we are going to have a discussion with Enterprise Uganda and have a meeting or a day where we can have staff come to Enterprise Uganda to help everyone. Because there are so many customized scenarios that we are in, different business scenarios, and we need, we need uh, a, a lot of information that can help us uh, on this path of business and uh, developing Uganda together. Yes, David Rusoke, I've been here for a while and uh, I've been in the field, I've been in audits, I've, uh, I've also done business. Uh, so I, I know both sides and uh, I, 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 I think, I, I, think I, I, I will talk from a point of also having, uh, having done business. I know what it means to be an SME. I know what it means to start out uh, and of course, uh, we also have our culture and our background settings, which also, uh, you know, they format us in different ways. And uh, there, all these factors come into play as we, are, uh, as, as, as we are going about our business. And usually, uh, the last thing that we think about is, is the taxman. The last thing that we think about is uh, even the trading license until until the, you hear that KCCA, uh, the enforcement officials of, uh, of the local government are coming and then you're like, okay, let's go do this. And ideally, uh, some of these things uh, have a, a way of uh, destabilizing us, not knowing what we're supposed to do, where to go. And that's why we are here. So thank you very much, Rosemary and Tim, for inviting us. And I am hoping that uh, because usually we have annual taxes. I'm hoping that you will, you will, you'll give us, you'll give us time every year to come and remind you, uh, to come and talk to you and give you more information on the new things uh, in order for you to, uh, to, to be informed and to, to, to act responsibly. Thank you. Uh, yes, I have a presentation which I'm going to get into and uh, I will, uh, request that uh, it's right now presented or I will uh, uh, try to present it. Uh, thank you. So I'm going off screen and uh, I will be talking in the background while I, uh, I present. Uh, thank you. So I hope you can see my screen. Excellent. Uh, demystifying tax. How you can get taxes right is what, is what we are dealing with. I hope all of you can see that is my first slide. We recently uh, made 30 years. And uh, yes, we've been here developing Uganda together with you in different capacities, indirectly, many of us, uh, there are a lot of indirect taxes to which we contribute. And, uh, but this today I'm dealing with what I'm defining as the SMEs and how you can get your taxes right. At the end of this session, I am hoping that no one will be afraid of, of the tax authority and uh, we will be able to, to deal with them. And uh, we will be able to deal with them and uh, ideally uh, fulfill our obligations. I'm trying to get to the next slide. Yes, uh, briefly, I will look at your mandate. I will look at what our taxes do as we pay. And uh, we will get into a, a talk on registration. I will definitely share 
on uh, a lot about registration because we have a lot of people who are registering wrongly and uh, I would like to make it clear. I will then uh, get into, because you are now registered, how do we get it right? That I think this, at this point, this will be the most important part of the presentation where, how do we get it right? And, and thereafter, we will get into the SMEs, the exceptions, uh, their new rates for SMEs. I'm going to share them out right now here today. And uh, then uh, I'll briefly share on the advantages of being compliant and the challenges that come with non-compliance. And of course, I do not expect any of us to stay in the SME zone forever. Our government is giving out a lot of services. We should be able to grow our businesses into bigger businesses. And we have many examples of people who have grown their businesses from SME to, to their all over. So uh, we'll also, uh, look at that briefly. How do we grow out of SME bracket? There are many factors that fall into play, apart from what we are going to deal with right now on uh, the SME uh, side. SME is small, medium, micro enterprises. Uganda Revenue Authorities mandate. We are here to assess, to collect, to account for government revenue. We were set up by an act of Parliament. We have the Uganda Revenue Authority Act, which brings us into play. And uh, of course, we celebrated uh, 30 years the other day. Uh, we've been here since 1991. And uh, uh, ideally, uh, we are supposed to collect and uh, put into the consolidated fund for government to run its business, for them to give services to the citizenry who uh, and, and that is you and me. Yes, we also collect non-tax revenue and other non-tax revenues. I hope to get into that. We advise government on different policies and uh, we also sensitize, educate our clients who become taxpayers on their rights and uh, obligations uh, because the tax law is quite big. And maybe to add here, whenever the, the budget is being read, government spells out their expected income and expenditure and usually uh, they, they 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 give a rationale they, they they say we are going to engage this area and taxation has is quite wide it has a lot of advantages at times taxes are put in place in order to discourage consumption in order to protect uh, the economy at uh, times you find high taxes like uh, you you'll, you'll hear of 150 percent uh, on taxes, that is to discourage uh, goods and services or rather goods from outside because they can locally, uh, we are frustrating the, the, the local production here. So uh, ideally we, we give advice based on the information and that we have. Yes, and I've been sharing briefly, I'm trying to make sure that uh, it flows. Uh, our taxes are there to ensure that uh, government provides services to the citizenry. Our roads, our uh, their maintenance. Uh, even if we are trying to get heavy uh, capital loans to to provide the infrastructure, we have to maintain uh, some of those facilitation of equipment uh, and. Uh, remuneration of teachers, programs like USC, UPE uh, are funded. Uh, and we contribute to some of this. Not everything comes from out. And ideally, if all of us were contributing, uh, we, 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 we wouldn't have to borrow or to rely on people. And uh, right now we are seeing uh, countries and economies where they have over borrowed and some of the assets are being taken. Our government hasn't reached that point, but if we do not come in, because we have very few people contributing, we will have uh, some of those issues and we need the services badly, ensuring that there's national security and that it's at its best throughout the country. Uh, yes, I've talked about the budget and uh, carrying out 
big projects and small. I will really request that after this, please go to the Ministry of Finance uh, site. Uh, usually they put there how they have spent the money. You can actually get down to your locality and know what exactly was spent where you are from uh, the consolidated fund. Good. Uh, right now, I'm hoping that all of us uh, yeah, are interested in uh, registration. And I'm sure some of us might have passed uh, this stage, but uh, please uh, stay with me. Uh, registration of taxes uh, really is about getting a taxpayer identification number, which is commonly referred to as a TIN. Uh, when you want a TIN, you must apply for it. Uh, we do not know when you are supposed to come, but usually you know I'm starting a business or I am, um, I've gotten a job or something comes up and you'll find at some point you will need a taxpayer identification number and it is issued by Uganda Revenue Authority. It is free of charge. Uh, we usually use a word, there's no cost to this and uh, we have tried to simplify our processes i will try to just uh, give uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to uh, explain that a little later and there are two different channels through which you can apply right now we have a web-based form where you do not need any attachment i'm sure many people know what it has been like but you do not need any attachment you do not need, um, all you have to do is put your NIN, your NIN, Ndangamuntu. And uh, once you do that, it auto populates. We have, we, we are working with the NIRA to get your details in order to make it easy. And we're going to also ensure that we can work with uh, your RSB to also make sure once you can auto populate, as we, we're trying to also improve our. Uh, our, our operations and our, our, the way we do business in order to make it easy for clients to access services. But uh, uh, there's a web-based application form. It's for individuals right now. And then there's the Excel template. It has been around for a while and we've had, it's a complicated, uh, but again, most of our service centers have uh, a place where you can actually apply. So uh, those are the two modes right now we will uh, definitely uh, try to improve them as time goes on. And yes, uh, this is legally backed. Uh, the tax procedures code is uh, uh, backing us on that uh, 2014 as amended. The tax procedures code act. It requires a person engaged in business to register for taxes you must acquire taxpayer identification number. We've also tried to simplify it further. We have uh, formed what we call the taxpayer register expansion program, where we work with uh, primary people. We work with the Ministry of Local Government, KCCA uh, and the URSB to, to have a one-stop center. We have many in all in all municipalities, in all uh, cases here, many of the divisions around, uh, we've tried to come and, and form one-stop centers where you can have at, at UIA, many of the KCC offices, you'll find we're somewhere around there in order to make it easier because you're coming to, yes, to, to government. Uh, we have a collaboration with these partners to again, make it easier. So. Uh, frankly, uh, instead of going into that internet cafe and they do a shoddy job, uh, which will eventually land you into uh, problems, uh, at times they don't give you your right emails and so on, and uh, you find there are a lot of challenges that come through. I'll explain that uh, further. But uh, this is registration simplified uh, within our communities. Uh, you'll find that uh, there's either a service center of URA and there's a self-help desk in URA or someone to help you apply. If you're not, uh, of course, I'll give you other channels which you can use to be able 
to register. Now, when you're using the Excel sheet, uh, some of these are the requirements. Uh, if you're an individual, uh, and today we are dealing with business, uh, we, we would like you to get, to make sure that uh, you, have, you have your NIN. We can still work. We know not everyone has a NIN. Uh, national ID. So we expect uh, you to at least have your passport, a copy of your passport, voter's card, and a few others, or your employee ID, especially for those who are employees. For those who are in business, we expect you to really work with us or under the the URSB arrangement and uh, where we're working together. But just in case, uh, I know, I hope I don't lose some people here. Please uh, keep up with me. But uh, we need you to register your name. And, and we're trying to encourage every Ugandan to normalize. We have a very big informal sector. Uh, many of us don't want to formalize, but we, are, we want to raise the bar. And government has really provided services. It, we have upped our game. We are hoping that you will register your name. If, if you don't make it limited, you could register your name in order for you to really operate in a formal manner. And I would encourage all of us SMEs to formalize. I'll continue speaking. I'll repeat a few things, but ideally, uh, yes, uh, good companies. I'll think here, and your SME could be a company, private, but uh, uh, a private limited company, you will need your Form 20 and a Certificate of Incorporation, COFPI. Uh, ideally, you'll need these, and these are classifications for a public entity, foreign. Uh, when it comes to a partnership, you might have a friend or two. Uh, please go to URSP, get the name for that partnership, Put your partnership deed to get, attach it and have the statement of particulars. That's the one that shows uh, that uh, you are in you you you're in a partnership. You're two or three or four. Yes. Then of course we can also register societies or clubs. These are the requirements for you to register to get a taxpayer identification number. Okay. And uh, now I'm getting into how to get it right. Of course, I'm assuming you have received your TIN, you have applied, you are now a registered taxpayer and you have a TIN. Uh, usually your TIN certificate has what we call an effective date of registration. It's important for you to take note of that date. It's important. Uh, because there is usually a year and you're supposed to report and, on your activities and pay obligations within a year. And how can we do it right? How can you and me start a business and do it well, do it right? Please get the basic tax knowledge. Yes, get, get, get some information. Don't just register, get a tin and walk away because they've told me they need it down the block to give me a trading license. Why are you getting it? Uh, maybe you need it because uh, you have an importation coming in. Kindly get, get, get knowledge on what you have just <laughs> gotten into. Yes, you have imported a few goods, maybe it's 500,000. Get, 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 get basic tax knowledge. And uh, I will point you somewhere. Uh, don't leave things to tax agents. What usually happens, uh, you have 50,000 in the, in, in the bag, you need a tin badly, and uh, you just go and get a tin, you go into an internet cafe, pay, maybe someone to help you, uh, and then you, you walk to your area, get the tin certificate, and you walk away. Uh, or you leave it to a tax agent who finds you on your desk and says, I'm going to help you, give me 50,000 or something. Kindly don't leave these things to the agents. Let them talk to you and come to Uganda Revenue Authority. Uh, we have seen a lot of challenges that people have gone through because they have left everything to the tax agent. And ideally, the, the guy puts in his email, 
because you're telling, just put in an email, he puts in an address. And then the next time you badly need to use your team, you find you, you don't own the team. And, and then you find a lot of challenges there. How do we get it right? Kindly get tax knowledge, kindly. I will not stop talking about it because uh, most of our challenges start with us not knowing, not getting information and acting on it. Get the tax knowledge and act on it. Second but not least is proper bookkeeping. Kindly. Uh, by the way, we, we are so good at how much has entered the Mekezi Yingi day. But when it comes to others, you find you're paying someone to do a paint job to get you uh, business cards, to get you and good business cards, someone to do the graphics, someone to paint maybe the door. And you find we do not keep records. That is like you're putting money in a bus or rather you're putting water in a basket. Uh, kindly, if you, you, you can look at your hands, if you can put water, a whole jerry can of water, I'll agree that yes, but at a semi level, you need to not only look at the sales one, we are good at that. We will record sales and not a row, now cause a millionaire more or something. But we do not know, oh, I made 10,000. And you tell everyone how business is tough based on your income, the sales that are coming in on a daily. Kindly keep the sales ledger, know how much you're making. And not only that, how much are you spending? Have summaries for the month. Have different records kept. This is critical if you're going to succeed, to go ahead. You, you, okay, at least you need to know that I have put in so far, the level of investment is at 100,000. And I bought this and this, I bought two, three things. These are the fixed assets. I paid for rent here. So far, I have put in 100,000, 100 mil, okay, not 100, okay. Let, let's say five million. Kindly, if you don't do that, it will be hard to calculate tax. And I'll talk about the challenges. In the challenges is you will get an estimate from URA because we don't know you don't have proper bookkeeping. And there is even a penalty for not keeping records because government revenue is at stake. You are now also play government is, is interested. So keep your books. There's a time to which you can keep your books. That one I'll leave it as homework. Yes, so I, I've given a few purchase records. C kindly find out where is the most money going, even if you're using Uber. Look for ways of having what I'll call, I hope I'm not being complicated, cost centers. If you're using Uber a lot, how can you do it if you're using airtime a lot how can you get a receipt for airtime how can you 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 need something and 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 really get 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 payment vouchers let people sign even if someone is signing for thirty thousand, let them sign and 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 bookkeeping is a very important aspect if the business is going to grow otherwise you'll keep asking getting it you, you you can't even get financing well if you haven't done your bookkeeping yes uh observe the due dates uh you'll you'll find that uh as you register the effective date our financial year which is also your year runs from july to june unless you ask for a normal another a normal year of income, but our year of income is first July up to the 30th of June, and we usually account. You could ask, and the law allows you to ask for a substituted year of income into the normal year of income or any other uh, different year of income. You could decide, me, I started in March, so I want my year to run from March, but uh, the law is clear on the, the, the guidelines for you to change, but our year of income runs from 1st July to the 30th of June. And ideally you'll find that you, you need to plan. You need to plan every year. You need to plan to think about your obligation as tax because you now have a teen. For some of us, as we go deeper, you'll find there are certain applications 
uh, returns that fall into play. And I will explain that further. Yes, how do we get it right? Pay on time. Pay on time. And we have even made things easier. If you do not have the money, if you had issues, you can ask for installments. I'm talking about how we can get it right. Uh, we are aware that uh, there is a pandemic and uh, there are a lot of sectors, a lot of businesses which are suffering. And, and, and there is a, 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 a process for you to ask for installments. So uh, don't sit back and say, I don't have money. Come and let's have a discussion. But paying on time will enable you not to have interest uh, because the, the, the rate of interest is 2% per month compounded, meaning at the end of the year, we're talking of about 24%. And it's, it's crazy. So uh, kindly pay on time. Some of us think we should use the money uh, and, and reinvest. Kindly, uh, yes, let, let, let us, government needs resources to take care of the citizenry. Take advantage of the different incentives. How will you know them? You need to get knowledge. There is voluntary disclosure. Right now, if you've worked for three, four years, in the back, if, if, if you come and talk to us and declare we have put forms in place, you don't have to pay the penalties and the interest you will just pay what is due, what you were supposed to pay then. So uh, yes, call our toll free line 0800 uh, There is also 0800 It is toll free call. We have a lot of people waiting to help you. Uh, we, we, we are trying to also make it, there's a self-service, but uh, you, you ideally will get any question answered from our toll free, whichever part of Uganda you are, you can call in. And we've introduced a WhatsApp number. We are trying to bring services closer. We are trying to help our taxpayers to get this information. So uh, WhatsApp, is on, uh, but you can also visit the nearest service center or check for information from us from your email. Know your rights and obligations. We have uh, procures, there's one called rights and obligations, which is on our web portal. And I will request that kindly visit uri.geo.ug and make sure that uh, you download some of those. If not, walk into our service centers and pick yourself a copy. Also get yourself a copy of the taxpayer registration starter pack. We have an e-copy, but it's, 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 I, I will show it when I turn on the, the video. Uh, let me try to turn on and see if, if you can see me, if you can't. Uh, uh, there is this, it has quite a lot of information that you will need in um, as, as you go on, but I will show it and uh, we will make them available when we come to Enterprise Uganda. So get yourself a copy of the e-copy or the, the small pocket easy to carry. You can read it anywhere, the startup part. Yes, how do we get it right? If your business has stalled, if you're trying to refinance, deactivate the team, write to us there is a process follow it and make sure that it is deactivated. Because here we are dealing with systems. We are assuming that you are out there doing business. Oh yes, you could return and show us, you could file a return and show us that guys this year I made nothing, but uh, it might be costly. You might be uh, using uh, an agent. So uh, deactivate the tin and, and when you're ready to come back, yes, Reactivate when ready to do business again. Reactivate when ready to do business again. So don't just say, I have a team, these people don't know me, I haven't been working, I don't have, how will we know? How will we know? Kindly come have a discussion with the nearest office and uh, fill out the deactivation forms, give reasons. You could write also a letter, 
don't just send an email. There is a process to many of these things. Uh, so we need for you to, there is a process that you need to flow, to follow rather, and uh, you will have the team deactivated and be sure it is deactivated. If you keep receiving communication from us, know it's still in the process, please keep checking on us. And of course, for reactivation when you're ready, something could happen the other day, we all had to go home and stay home. And uh, you find some of us had to close our, office, uh, or our offices or shops where in, uh, in malls. Uh, that means we, we have no choice, but we have to close. So uh, we yeah, come and reactivate now that we are opening up because you deactivated. Yes, know when the business has grown. At times our businesses grow, but we want to remain small. That, that is not true. On the taxation side is where you want to remain small. But out there, you find you now know you have broken through and uh, you're no longer on the SME standard. Kindly do not define yourself because we, we, we are carrying out also our, our usual checks, our audits. We will find you. And that will be a challenge. Getting it right means when you start employing people, uh, yeah, you become, you're supposed to become an, you are an employer right now. That means, and if you're paying them more than 230, yeah, 235,000, that means payee falls into play. And uh, if you don't account for it, you should deduct it from them and, 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 and start, let everyone contribute. Government wants a lot of resources to be able to do everything even as we want and we're allowed to go and contribute our ideas get closer to the tax man many of us when you talk of URA by URA was many of us it's, it's a challenge uh for some people they switch off phones others change things uh, even where someone is not registered you find people fleeing and yet ideally uh we are here we have and now we, 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 we are looking at everyone as our client and would like to really reach out to you. So uh, get to know you are, get closer to the taxman, visit the office, find out when, when do they come. <laughs> there, there's no, no time when they are killing people. <laughs> okay, uh, I'd like to, to say that. For smugglers, yes, but smugglers are usually also armed. So uh, that's a different ball game. So there's no reason for you to fear if you're not doing business. I mean, if you're an employee, why should you run away? Your PAY is being deducted by your employer. Now, let me bring it here. Uh, if, if, if you're doing the right thing, uh, there, there's no need. And even if you're not doing the right thing, there is a mechanism, there's a process for you to come on board. Yes, please read your emails. We have a lot of emails, communications that we sent to you and they are not read. Many of us are fast to pass you only look for that import entry and so on or, or that tax clearance. You, you're not interested in reading. It's a culture which uh, we need to walk away from. Own your team, don't surrender it to agents. Some of us give agents, file for me, what, and they change everything and you find they have purchased or imported things in your team. And then when we come and say you imported things worth or you exported things worth so much, you're like me, I have never even touched that money, but we gave you the tin. So getting it right means, look, every time that agent comes, let him log in with your login, with your tin and change it. And guess what? Some of us have our cars transferred and then you start blaming URA for for giving away your password and yet you gave out your password or you have ideally allowed someone to own your team. Kindly let us, the way you're making that money in a small SME, kindly own your team. Don't surrender your password to agents because we have a lot of cases where we are raising interesting assessments based on what we're seeing on third party information and someone is saying no. Yes, there is a lot of literature. Neware.geo.ug, kindly, the downloadable literature, which I'd like to interest us to read. And by the way, many of us are not born businessmen. So you're learning and you're getting good at it. Also get good at reading and reading this literature. That's how we're going to change this country. That's how we are going 
to grow. Okay, uh, I'm trying to get to the next slide. Um, yes, and now let me get to, th th that is really about it. Uh, here in here are nuggets and uh, some things that if you really, if you follow through, they're very simple, they look simple, you might actually brush them off, but the truth is these are things uh, which usually are not done and they bring a lot of uh, challenges to our people. Uh, and right now I'd like to get into uh, the taxation of SMEs. Uh, their government has understood that uh, not all of us are at the same level and created what we call presumptive tax. That is how we are taxing small businesses. I, I may not go into so much of the rationale, the law, uh, because um, ideally uh, I would like to put a table here, but uh, as we get to engage and uh, as you engage us, on phone, in the different communication channels, we will be able to answer you. I, I want to prepare to finish. These are the rates maybe to mention. Uh, this is designed for small businesses and basically looks at the volume or turnover of a particular business for a given year of income. Excellent. So if your turnover is 10 million and below, and you don't have records, uh, tax is nil. And you can have the, you can apply for the tin and you will put in that I made 9 million, but how do you know you made 9 million? You must keep records. Uh, we will come and we will look at your stock, look and, and we will estimate for you and we'll say, no, 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 no. I don't think you are in the nil bracket. We know what the nil people look like. We have an eye for tax. We are trained to look for tax. So you don't want me to come and uh, estimate for you. So kindly, I would like everybody here to graduate, to, to, to have records. And I talked about that. How do we do it right? Record keeping is critical. Without records, it is still nil. And uh, these are the rates. If your turnover is between 10 and 30 million, only 0.4% of uh, your turnover, which is in excess of 10 million. And I'll give you a simple example. Let's assume you made 21 million. You just get 21 million minus 10 million, which leaves 11 million. And we multiply 11 million by 0 0.4. And you'll find us being around there, 40 or something like that. 44, 42, you know something like that. But if you don't have records, but you estimate, maybe you have records that are not clear. Uh, yeah, there we are. We are going to put you in without records, you will pay 80,000, okay? Yes, uh, if uh, your turnover exceeds 30 million, but does not exceed 50 million, these are SMEs, 80,000 plus 0.5% of the turnover, which is in excess of, let's assume it is 40 million. Of course, the 0 0.5 is 40 minus 30, and that's where we put the 0 0.5, but plus the 80,000. Without records, you'll go up to 200,000. Can you imagine if you have a turnover of 50 million and you're paying only 200,000, that's, that's amazing. Because employees are paying uh, something else. If I tell you what the employees are paying, it is some, it's a it's, it's, it's hundred times of this. Anyway, uh, yes, exceeding 30 million, but does not exceed 80 million. The same formula for those with records. It becomes a little uh, much smaller, but the maximum is for those without clear records. Keeping, you'll pay 400,000. And then from 80 million to 150 million, if you can't keep your records, you pay a maximum of 900,000. I can imagine someone keeping, having a turnover of 150 million and only paying 900,000. Uh, first time I thought government had really, you know, us on the collection side, we were not happy. But for SMEs, this is good. And this is, of course, because of the pandemic. Uh, so keep your records. 
and you'll find yourself paying much, much less. I hope I made my point there. There are exceptions to this, especially for people in business providing medical, dental, accounting, architectural, engineering, legal, professional services, public entertainment services, public utility services, construction services. There's an exception. You are not in the SME bracket. We believe you can keep records and account for your taxes. And it's much better, by the way, uh, because you pay exactly what is due. If you are in losses, it is losses. Um, advantages of being compliant, I've highlighted a few. Uh, you won't have unnecessary disruptions like close of business when we are enforcing. We have very many ways of enforcing and you will have challenges with us. I am preparing to close in maybe three or four. Uh, yes, uh, if you have, um, if you're compliant, you can easily get a clear tax clearance. It is easy to get refunds. And uh, yes, when you look at your people coming and you've paid your percentage, you have your records, you will not, <laughs> you'll not fear us. You'll just be, yes, how are you? My records are here. It's like if you paid the trading license, you say, yes, I paid it here and guys will just walk past. Yes, field visits, you, you don't get to fear us. And, and there's a satisfaction of being responsible. You know, you're happy that you've contributed according to the law. Many of us are irresponsible in the way we are choosing given our leaders because we do not contribute anything, but you become responsible when you know I paid my 900,000 and look at who is this, who is becoming my leader. You will not give your vote to people who are irresponsible. Disadvantages of being compliant, estimates, you are a, when you don't file, <laughs> you, we, we are allowed by law to estimate and raise an estimate based on what we see, uh, but our system also raises based on the industrial average. So we will get the best in your sector, the worst in your sector, uh, and then we will, we will, we will yeah, raise uh, seeing some spelling error. Sorry about that. Yes, penalties and interest will come your way kindly uh that, that that is not because you're paying interest and penalties and yet uh, you could have done it better closures of business i've talked about that customs lien you could bring your goods and find they can't even come in you're experiencing damage because you're not compliant agency notices we could tag many of the people that you supply or um, people that are supposed to pay you and you'll have a challenge Missing out on business uh, business opportunities. Uh, there are very many enforcement actions. Uh, even taking you to court. To there are many. We have a lot of options there. We can put you on the shame list. There is reputation loss when you find you have closed because of us. The rates that I showed you there are lowered, and they are based on turnover. However, taxpayers with no records will pay the fixed cost. And that one usually is for us to determine, okay? You, because you don't have a record for us, we will come and give you that other record. But again, we might actually take you out of the SME bracket. Excellent. Uh, there are other tax heads that also come into play. And uh, these ones, I think I'll explain uh, because many of us may not be here, but you find we are doing some of these things and we should know that uh, we, we will come, we, we, I, th I think this is a deeper part. Uh, returns and other tax types, due dates, those are for people that are stepping out of SME zone. Uh, this is your outlook and you should start knowing that there are monthly returns, there are weekly returns, and uh, we, we should get into that. Life after SME, that's the next level. Uh, there, there's the voluntary registration of VAT because there are business opportunities when you can, when you're registered for VAT. That is something for us to think about. Um, Self-assessment, like the professionals, you self-assess. You know this year, 
I made so much, but I incurred so many, I'm, and maybe in lost position, and you'll find uh, there, there's a way when you're in lost position. Uh, for a while, the, there was a time when there was no tax a bit, but the, the, there are some people who started being in lost positions for like 10 years, 20. And so there, there was a, a slight change to that. But uh, usually uh, when you're in lost position, there's not much we know you're trying to come through. Um, you'll start returning and accounting for the other tax heads. The, the, the previous two slides have that. Uh, there's e-freeze and e-receipts. We are improving our solutions. We are improving our services to you. And uh, e-freeze is electronic fiscal receipting and invoicing solution, which uh, you could have heard about it in the supermarket zone where you are. But uh, also e-receipts, we are, we are going to get there soon. We will ask everybody to give an e-receipt if you're not registered for IFRIS. There's the digital tracking solution. You've seen most of the drinks. Uh, that is an area for those who are stepping out uh, of that zone. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that is it from, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening to me. And uh, at this point, I will come back to you, Rosemary, for uh, the next phase. Thank you. All right. Thank you very, very much, uh, David Rusoka. This was an excellent, uh, excellent um, sensitization session. And uh, evidently, from the number of uh, entrepreneurs who have signed up, people are actually very keen. And I think you've shared very useful information. I think there's one key learning that uh, we have all gone away with. Personally, I didn't know that there was something like activating and deactivating your team. So I think that was excellent. And uh, and now we have so many questions coming. You've also can register as an individual or, or as a company. So that that I think that covers everybody. And uh, and I think that uh, those who thought that you only register with URA when when you have a company there's a provision for uh, registering as an individual. Uh, David, I also like that you say uh, it, the TIN is free. It is actually free to register. You just have to go to the URA portal. I also like the fact that uh, under the TREP, the Taxpayer Registration Expansion Program, you have, you've, you've moved the services closer to the people. That you can go to KCCA, you can go to Registration Services Bureau, but also local government. And so I think this really, uh, we appreciate the effort to push the services down to the people. But there are so many questions and I will, I will now I think go to the questions because there are so many questions. You've, you've touched on the issue of presumptive tax. And David, I would like you to say a little bit about, uh, so who, I mean, presumptive taxes for who? How do I qualify to get into that bracket? And, and what is the process involved to, uh, for, for registration as a presumptive taxpayer? Uh, you've also highlighted advantages of being compliant, which is good, that there are benefits to being compliant. And, uh, and uh, one of them uh, being that uh, you don't have to fear visits. But you realize, and I've just looked at the question, there's so many questions in the chat group and all the questions also, they all revolve around, there is a perception, a negative perception about tax enforcement. And everybody here has an experience. They've seen, either they've experienced it personally, or they have seen somebody who has been manhandled by your tax enforcement people. And so, um, so there are so many questions. So I would like now to, uh, if you have a question, please put up your hand. And should be able to pick you to to respond to okay rosemary you're breaking up i don't know why i think 
Yes, rosemary or very um, I, I Me Hello, are we still on? Uh, I, I think we lost Rosemary back there. Hello, are we still on? I hope I'm not alone here. Okay, Rosemary is back. Nice to have you, Rosemary. We were missing you. Uh, kindly continue <laughs> what you are saying. Thank you. Sorry, I, I... I go to so you've been offline for a few or maybe are we it was on? Are maybe... We... yes, we are on. We are on. Went off. I don't know. Sorry. But let's. Uh, uh, David. Yes, yes, Rosemary. Okay. Let, me, let me read out the question because there are a number of questions in the chat. We wait for us to ask directly. There was a question from Dora Egunyu from Karoti. 
Dora says she hasn't found much help from her in helping her adhere to, to taxes. She's been struggling to register for pay as you earn and, and, and in Soroti, but has had real problems. So she's asking you okay. to, to reach out to her. She has shared her number, which I'll share with you, so to reach out to her and help her. Okay, I, I'm going to request that uh, uh, that you, you 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 can write to services and give give us your services at ura.go.ug. Give us share the reference number plus um, you you could actually also copy me in my email. I'm putting it in the chat. Uh, for you to sh to also copy me in for me to follow up. Okay, that's David. Yes. We want a few. We are still in the analog. Uh, we want a personal touch. When you refer anybody to a system, go to this and log in. It is different. They have so. I think one of the deliverables, an outcome from this session would be for you to give us a name, a person, that the, so that the, the entrepreneur is able to call an individual, not to go on the, on the portal or log in and make entries. Okay, so you will share with us a contact person who can... I definitely will, I definitely will. Uh, we are that he can be activated. Yes, hello, good morning. Morning. Yes, I have several questions. Who is that? My name is Dungo Peter. One question the is, ones you are why, why are we being penalized as tenants when the, when the landlord has not in? Because uh, I'm a business person and I'm paying the rent at my place of business. And when I file my returns, URA says that I provide the details for the landlord team. And when I call the, the landlord, he has no team. But I end up being penalized for that, for that lack of team by the landlord. Is it my obligation to make sure that he has a team or it's your age? My second question is, we have had a lot of emphasis. You are telling people, yes, that team is for free. Nothing, nothing to cost you nothing, but there's no emphasis on educating the taxpayers or the people registering for tax, the after effects of having that team. There are people who register, but have not yet started the business or even maybe the business goes down immediately after starting. There's no that education that if you don't file return, we shall penalize you. So I think we need a lot of education now after registration, what next? Another question is, uh, I've been filing using the Excel system and from your presentation, I have realized that there is a simpler system to file returns, which is the presumptive tax. I don't know whether is it true because I find Excel very complicated. If, if I'm not an accountant, I may not understand all those slides for the Excel, which we have to, we have to fill in our cells and stuff. Another question I have, as a sole proprietor, the team I registered when I was opening, can I use it to open several other businesses? To serve several other businesses, let's assume of different, different functions. And my another question is, also as, as a self-employed person, should I pay, pay tax or all pays for another person I employ. I have my business, I'm working for myself. I don't have another employee. Do I have to pay pay for paying myself? That's, an, that's a question. Then I have another one. Just allow me just to finish my question because the network is not fine. My question is about enforcing. Okay. You, you, are, you are saying that 
we shall enforce, we shall send our enforcement officers to, to come to your business. Can we have another way of dealing with these issues instead of forcing, you know? Because many people are running away from you already because of the force, which is being used by your officers. Can we, as a small business owner, can I have a cool and a better way to be told this is how things are supposed to be done? Another question I have, I have been filing my taxes using the other income tax model, but my, my business is a small medium enterprise. I'm a mobile money agent. Is it, is it possible now, maybe from next year, can I start now filing presentative tax instead of this other way I've been filing? And how, how should I explain that I want to now start filing turnover tax instead of, instead of having to detail all these expenses that I have been having in my business. And you know, mobile money business is small, we just depend on commission. So we don't also get a lot of money. That's, those are my questions, thank you. You first, I would like to give an opportunity to then respond to those questions. Then we can bring in another. Mr. Rusoke, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm here. Uh, I, I, I did hear your last words, but uh, thank you very much. I'd like to appreciate um, Mr. Peter Ndugu for your, especially uh, your, your very many questions. I think I'm sure they will, re you'll represent many of us here. Uh, and, and, and that's why in my presentation, I talked about how do we do things well? And, um, uh, let me start with uh, the rental expense. Uh, what has happened is that uh, in self-assessment, when you declare that I paid rent of 1 million shillings, uh, we, we need to get that landlord and they also pay rental tax. Uh, now, there are so many people who have declared it until uh there, there, there is a part of the law that say don't deal with the people who have no teams uh, we are going to discourage and we are discouraging people who don't want to be compliant to deal with those that are compliant because the ones that are compliant are contributing while there are others who are not compliant and and so we 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 did that to encourage you to leave and go to someone else's place who has uh, who is compliant will give you a tin because when you put him in your declarations, we uh, there is a, a self accounting system kind of where everyone who has gotten into business is found out. And the same for you, I'm sure your mobile money records uh, are seen here, and uh, we there, there, there are some taxes that uh, are applied for you. So there are also fraudulent people who, who will say, I got 10 million shillings, I paid it to David Rusoke as rent, and yet it was actually 3 million. Uh, so when you put the tin, uh, we, and, and there are many David Rusoke. So we are now talking about formalization of business. How do we formalize? How do we do business well? How do we keep records? Uh, because you, you, many of us want to send the money on mobile money and then you forget it. Ask for a receipt. We had a campaign of Mpari City Yang. Uh, and, and we come to explain all these things before we start them. Uh, usually, we don't just go out and we, we do stuff. We, we educate. Only that most times when someone hears this is your array, they, they, they will go to another channel. Education is needed. Uh, that cannot be emphasized more. We, that's why I'm here. And uh, you're getting to learn a few things. And that's why I was talk in my presentation, I emphasized for you to get some tax knowledge, basic 
and keep getting this tax knowledge and don't only get tax knowledge the information is everywhere uh, we really spent to give tax information we we go out we on radios everywhere i am part of the people who are teaching every day every day and i have a team and senior management everybody is teaching station heads are teaching somewhere um, but, but you find many of us put our we, we, we don't want to listen and then when the action starts uh, we start saying i didn't know but you you you, you didn't put any effort for many of our clients but we are teaching and that's why i'm talking about this i talked about an, an easy to read taxpayer registration starter pack it's at every station it talks about your rights and obligations it talks about ura it talks about uh when you should file when you should pay it talks about the annual returns the monthly the weekly it talks about payment it talks about let's have and we are willing to give it to every ugandan we are willing to print and give it to every ugandan for them to get knowledgeable to know uh pay uh, for you uh, why would i encourage you to do uh, pay for yourself uh, because many of us when you get money 10 million today and i'm sure enterprise uganda has dealt with you on a proper business uh, business uh, should i call them procedures or uh, let me call them how to do business well in order for it to grow i'm sure they teach uh, but the thing is if you give yourself a salary you will find by the end of the year maybe you don't have anything and you will have paid yourself done work for because you're self-employed and, and so you'll find let's assume at the end of the year you have gotten a loss uh, you you will have had something to depend on many of us just start doctoring to show that ah, i was in loss i didn't make money and, and and we don't even know but usually you find when it is school fees you just pull out of business when it is uh, now your own rent at home those are not business transactions you need to separate yourself from the business and i think it's it's, it's the, the way forward is for you to deduct pay as you earn it will help you plus maybe your employees whoever is working for you whoever is cleaning the shop or something uh you put them in the return end of the day you'll put that cost in and we will understand it clearly by the time we carry out enforcement measures we will have done so much enforcement isn't done on anyone who is not aware there is a process before we start enforcement actions we remind we send reminders we send letters we try to tell you we are going to do this uh, and even by the time they close an account usually they've given you the first or they deduct money from an account there has been a first reminder there has been a second reminder there has been a final reminder and even after the final reminder there is a period where we call you please every month we send reminders for you to file returns actually some people are complaining that you are over sending we send about maybe five messages please file your return for last month we are about to get into media we are going to ask individuals to file their provisional returns we will ask the non-individuals to file their returns but guess what people just pass before an assessment is raised on you you are told please within five days if you do not file now these are generic system generated emails apart from the team the staff calling the taxpayers that he's looking at calling and saying please file a return a reminder is sent at times sms's are sent and people just ignore them there is a lot of record which shows every team has got a lot of reminders peter uh that one if you want i can even give you the numbers when you come i'll show you i'll tell you we've we've said so many and uh usually people don't take it here so uh, as long as you refuse you don't respond to the reminders you don't follow through someone calls you you don't respond someone says come to ura for an interview you don't come what happens is that uh, you graduate to the next level 
of enforcement. Otherwise, we wouldn't come. We wouldn't come if you've done everything you're supposed to do. We will not come. We will not have to remind you. But this is for people whom we are trying to reach and we are not getting through. Uh, yes, I understand your mobile money business. I know how it works. And uh, it going on, um, I, 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 I need to clarify whether you are on the, in the professional bracket because there's some money that is deducted from you from the other side. And we need to know which is which in order because we can see it. Uh, but if you can actually get all your commissions and you say these are below the maybe the 40 million, uh, we, we, we can start working around that. I, I'll request that uh, visit your nearest office and let's have a discussion. Call 0800-11-7000 with your numbers and let us have a deeper, a deeper discussion on that. Uh, then uh, I saw Agatha talking about, do we do interpersonal training or do we give interpersonal skills to people who sit at the front? We have trained our people. We have trained and are training. Only that at times we transfer, we make so many transfers and uh, uh, there are few, the trainings haven't come through, but we train our people. There's no reason why someone we, we are taught to respect we are taught to handle you with courtesy and to give you a good experience. We want you to actually come and have a good experience. If you're having challenges, uh, yes, 0800, the toll free is there. The email is there, you can document it. We want actually to have all the frontline officers having their ne having name tags. We usually wear our name tag or our ID kindly get the the name of that person uh, just like police we are actually going to ensure our names are tagged on the uniforms we are working on that but uh kindly report any 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 behavior that you feel is not uh, acceptable for someone who is uh at our front office and we will take care of that christine thank you for your appreciation and uh, yes, I will now go back to uh, to Rosemary for any other questions while I look at uh, the the chat. Thank you, Rosemary. Over to you. Okay, uh, maybe I'll just continue here. David, do you hold training and awareness sessions in Uganda Revenue Authority every day for the public? We are holding every day for different, uh, taxation is quite a wide, a wide subject. And uh, we, there, there are so many things in there. We are dealing with the manufacturers. We are dealing with the uh, many people, even the diplomats. We're having a lot of stakeholder engagements with different people. And uh, we are even coming forward to, again, deal with the different organized groups like Enterprise Uganda, Private Sector Foundation. I have been there. We are meeting many of the members to be able to see uh, well, we, we, we are trying to, to, to reach out to our people, our taxpayers, our would-be taxpayers, because some of them are not yet on the register. Uh, share the screen. I think I did that earlier. Um, okay, while I wait for Rosemary, I will uh, continue from Soroti. I'm going to deal with that thing. I've taken your number. Uh, that is Dora. I am going to talk to you after here. Um, your experience, Peter, has not been good with URA. Kindly uh, let us talk about that. Sorry about that. I apologize. And uh, 
In 2013, I was forced to have a teen for a business that failed to start. Three years later, I had to pay penalties of over 8 million. I, I, I think that comes because you did not file returns. Had you filed returns and said it is zero, uh, and, and then there is an objection process where... Okay, now it is admitted. Okay, Rosemary is Hello, back. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Uh, the host wasn't yes, allowing yes, me to, to, to unmute. Very sorry about that. Yes, um, I, I think there are more questions in the chat, but uh, there's a question from... Uh, there was Lydia Kakaire was saying, can we deactivate the deactivation? Can we deactivate even for a day? For example, what happened in Kampala on Tuesday, is an SME allowed to deactivate, say, for a day or a week and then come back, you know? Or is it uh, for a whole uh, ca uh, calendar year or accounting year? Then another question from, from, from Rose, now, Rose, and she says, what is the grace period for her who has just registered her business and is still navigating the water? So when, uh, after you've registered, how long does it take before you actually start paying taxes? Uh, I think those are the two questions. And then um, I see uh, commendations from the, in the chat room. Uh, people are saying they are willing, they are willing to pay taxes, but there's lack of knowledge. And so again, the toll free numbers are not very helpful. People want a personal, a personal touch, a personal, you know, a face behind a number. So toll free numbers are not doing it for most of our clients. Thank you. You can respond to those. Over to you, David. Have we lost David? Members, can you hear me? I need some feedback. Can anybody hear me? Can you hear me, members? I, I, I seem to have lost yes, David. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. OK, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. So David, are you there? Mr. Rusoke, can you hear me? I see you. Can yes, you I me? can hear you. I can hear loud and clear. Did you hear the questions that I, I, I posted? No, I, I the, the screen just blocked out. You've just come back like, uh, I think, uh, oh, five seconds. OK, ago. so let me repeat the questions. There were, there, were, there were two questions. One from Lydia Kakairi, she says, can we deactivate even for a day or two? For instance, what happened on Tuesday in Kampala? we didn't do business. So are we able to deactivate for that period or is it for a longer period? So give more light there. And then Rose N says, what is the grace period for somebody who has just registered her business and is still navigating the waters before they start paying taxes? And then, and then in, the, in the chat, I can see that uh, 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 Catherine, Catherine Nantongo says, Mr. Rusoke, can you share about where this teaching, where, where can Mr. Soke share where he is teaching these classes or where one can go to be taught about tax obligations as easy as it is to register should be as easy as it is to learn. Many of us struggle to be compliant because we don't understand, not because we are dodging. And I think that's the general message that I'm sensing from the members that people are willing to comply, but there are so many information gaps. And so where do they go? Today you have done good education and members seem to understand, like we've learned things like deactivation. Nobody has ever said it. Even I don't know it as Enterprise Uganda. So I think there's very good knowledge, but the challenge as we can see is how do we get more education out there and, uh, and get more people complying? Thank you. So you can respond to those, David. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, members, thank you very much. Lydia, Rose, and Catherine, thank you. Where is teaching? Uh, when I went off, I think I kept talking to myself until I, <laughs> I was talking about how we are teaching every day. We are on radios. We are on so many communication channels trying to give information to you. But I right now, uh, it is targeted. But if you walked into our service center nearest to you, 
you would have a customized uh, uh, training. Someone would sit down, you, you just have to know what you need, or you can tell the person, I'm starting out, I need to know. But I, I also want to encourage you to read. I showed this book. There are many other leaflets. There is a lot that is on your on on uh, Kindly also, there are many ways of learning something. We, we, we all have different ways of perceiving or receiving information, processing it, and deciding to use it. All of us, we are different, and we, 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 we cannot have uh, only one mode. So I, I appreciate the fact that uh, today you have understood. I will call you when I'm dealing with, for example, uh, VAT, I, I may be dealing with voluntary disclosure. I may be dealing with a topic that is not of interest to you if you come on a daily, but I can talk to you, even myself, even my team, and I will leave my, my details behind for us. And thank God you have Enterprise Uganda. We could have another in-house training for even a day where we will come, we prepare, uh, you, you, you send us many of these questions and we will deal with all of them. So uh, kindly just know we can, we can come to where we are and this is an effort as you can see. Uh, we will keep uh, coming. So there's a lot of information we can teach you in our service centers. We can also teach you individually on phone. Uh, there are many ways that we have to do this because what what is most important is when you get it and you are able to 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 to, to be to, to fulfill your obligations. Grace period. Yes, Rose, Lydia, I hear you. Uh, let me talk to Lydia. The other day we had an issue. Uh, let me say this: uh, you, your your return or your declaration or your self assessment is for a given period of twelve months. But let's assume for six months you didn't work. We wait for the period to end when there is reporting of that period. For example, in the financial year Have we lost our uh, Mr. Soke, or is it me? We've lost him. Oh dear. Thanks, Lydia, for that feedback. Um, the internet is just, that's the story of our country with, with very bad internet. Um, Mr. Rusoke, let's give him a few minutes. Yeah, he's back. Uh, Mr. Rusoke, we had lost you. Welcome back.
So sorry that uh, I, I was off. It looks like we're having uh, internet challenges. Rosemary, I don't know where I stopped yes, because- Yes, you're now back. Welcome back. Up. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was talking about uh, the grace period, especially I was answering Rose, Rose's question of the grace period. Kindly document if you have zero cells, there is no tax. We don't want to collect from someone who is not operating. If you have sales, please account. If you don't have, there is no tax, but you will put it in your return. And you will show that actually guys, I may be, maybe I make pillows and I didn't sell in the whole of July and I sold to 10 people. David bought three pillows, so and so bought. And there are days when I didn't sell and my turnover is right now only 10 million or 9 million, there is no tax. Tax starts, especially for the SMEs, from, from 10 million and above. I am going to leave my presentation for you to look at it, and we are going to have other engagements. I believe I've given you a lot of information. You're going to process, and we're going to keep building on that for you to, 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 to grow in tax knowledge. Uh, yes, I've finished Catherine Rose and Lydia's question. Back to you, Rosemary. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rusoke. I think that I'll, uh, this has been an extremely useful, very informative session. As you can see from the number of SMEs that have turned up, and you can see these are very willing people, willing to pay taxes. It's just we need to plug in. And so I'm delighted. And can you still hear me? Members, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are very loud and clear. Yes, so um, I want to bring this to a close. I don't see any other hands up, but clearly there are still many questions. There's need for, for more engagement. What, 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 what comes through clearly is that there is willingness to pay taxes. It is just that there, is, there, is, there are gaps in educating uh, the, the, the business community. So the SS SMEs are willing to pay taxes, and that's the message we want to take back to URA. However, there must be education. But also, once education has education and then support, the support must be there. And I think that what I hear clearly from the comments in the chat is that members are asking for a contact person. Don't give us the toll-free number. Don't tell us to go to your portal. We want, we, want, we want somebody that we can interface with. So as Enterprise Uganda, we are willing to be that contact point. If you if you then can I designate somebody that we can deal with on a day to day to respond to these issues, but also to provide the necessary in bridging that gap. The other thing that comes out clearly, Mr. Risoke, is that those who are filing are actually struggling. The system, the process of filing returns is very complicated, that online process. And they end up needing an accountant and that is an extra cost. And we want you to appreciate that. So. Either we are going to spend more time on, on supporting and educating the business people to make it easier for them to file returns. But I like it that on our group here, we have Kenneth. Kenneth Chirabo has posted his contacts. I'd like you all to go to the chat group. He says, hi, everybody. If you need any support in improving your business records remotely, kindly reach out to Kenneth at amarifinancial.com. So his number is actually in the chat group. I think that is, that is useful. The other feedback uh, that we receive here is there's too much uh, force that is, is exercised in enforcement. And so I think that uh, the business community is crying out for a relationship. They want a relationship. They want somebody to understand, to work with them the journey, and they should be able to be compliant. And so, of course, in all this, record keeping is key. I think in, when you resp respond to the questions about uh, those who are saying, how do I, you know, I think that keeping our records, so our, our business community members, it is important that we keep records because it is only when you have documented evidence that you're able to make claims and say, I'm filing for, I'm filing a zero return because I didn't do business and your records should show that actually there was no business. And so with this, I, I want to thank you so much, uh, David, and to thank all our entrepreneurs that, uh, that have stayed in, that have, have listened in and have asked very useful question, but also to apologize for technology. Today, we've had so many disruptions, apologies. 
uh, internet seems to be, I mean, looks like that's how it is. It's a very moody uh, uh, person, if I, may, if, if I may say. So apologies for the disruptions, but I'm glad that you have stuck on to the end. And we promised that uh, we, were, we were going to receive the, the presentation from, uh, from Mr. Rusoke, and we will share it on email as usual. So you, you must have registered with your email address and you will automatically receive the presentation. But to say, anybody who has, the, those who have the one-on-one, -on -one, the real pain points, the one-on-ones, please don't hesitate to either contact Mr. Rusoke or to contact uh, us at Enterprise Uganda, and we will link you to Mr. Rusoke or the designated officer that he's going to give us, okay? And so with that, I want to thank you very much and again, to wish you a lovely week ahead. Let's keep asking questions. Let's keep coming for these sessions. Again, next week, we shall bring you another topic. Uh, we haven't yet confirmed. We'll confirm in the course of the week. Next Thursday, we shall be here again together discussing ways in which we can improve our businesses, sharing knowledge, insights that you shall be able to grow your business. And so thank you very much, Mr. Rusoke. Uh, big hand clap to you. You can I'll just clap on behalf of everybody and to appreciate you for your time. Thank you very much. I would, I would then like to bring this uh, session to a close. Unless Mr. Rusoke, you have one more word you want to say, otherwise I want to close this session and to appreciate you so much for that. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, Enterprise Uganda. And uh, okay. Uganda Revenue Authority is here to serve you. Mm -hmm. We are here to help you and uh, we apologize. Uh, we are a very big elephant and at times things are not perfect, but uh, we are doing our best. And we're not even doing our best. We are stretching ourselves. We are undergoing mm. change. Sorry for the challenges that we are going through and you are going through in this difficult economic time. But uh, we are going to be here. There, there, there's, please look for a station head when you go to our service centers. We have equipped our call center with the best, latest young people who are going to help you. But just in case you also need a number. We, because I wouldn't like the people in Western Uganda to come to Kampala. I wouldn't like the people in uh, Eastern Uganda. I am noticing we have quite a number of people. But uh, if, if, if you fail, I'm going to give a number. Uh, we have the manager of client support. She's called Ruth Matovu, where you have really issues that are grave, uh, report such issues. rmatovu at ura.geo.ug. Mine is drusoke at ura.geo.ug. Please send me an email. I will send it to the responsible person and we will try to have your issue uh sorted i'm interested in you having all the information kind of but come also try to read something come to me when you've come halfway and you need more information it will help me but if i'm starting from zero every time it will it will be a challenge so read up then come let us have a meaningful discussion rosemary thank you for inviting me here i now sign out and uh, yes uh, god bless you see you next time Rosemary, I want a meeting with these guys, especially at your office, for us to have maybe a day or half a day where we can come and help registrations. We can even prepare, even if you prepare a thousand, even if you are a thousand, it will help us to come and have different clinics and help you. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. Over to you, Rosemary. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, David, for that. We will work on that and we'll communicate. We'll fix the date and uh, get the business community to come in and, and listen in. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Risoke. I, I would like to bring this to a close and to wish you an excellent day and God's protection over all of you. Thank you. Feel